Alright guys, so you saw the thumbnail, you clicked on the link, and if you're watching this video and you're afraid of snakes, congratulations, you're one step closer to overcoming your fear of snakes. And I really want to help you through that fear, and uh, believe it or not, I'm standing in the middle of my snake room, surrounded by <laughs> over a hundred snakes, and I know a lot of people out there, that's terrifying to even think about. So I'm going to help you get over that fear <laughs> as much as I can. And the first thing I want to talk about, I want to simplify it and break it down. And I just want to talk about fear. Okay, so believe it or not, I am not a stranger of fear. There have been a few very memorable moments. I'd say at least three moments in my life where I felt... Uh, terror I was guess you would say it's very memorable and all three were completely different and and so basically fear is is I, in a lot of time in a lot of cases you don't want to be afraid but your mind kind of shuts off and and your body takes over <laughs> and let me tell you that it affects me in different ways depending on the situation and uh, if you're watching this and and I would really like to see if you post a comment down below what really triggers your fear of snakes and what uh, your body does in response to that trigger. So, for example, uh, I, have, uh, I have a trigger <laughs> that I had about 30 years ago, and as a matter of fact, I only felt it once, and it was extreme terror. And it was like every muscle in my whole body wanted to scream, and I was in such terror that I was speechless. <laughs> and let me tell you about that that instance. Then there it was about uh, I'd say about 30 years ago, and I was in the military in the 101st Airborne, and uh, I was a ground pounder. <laughs> I was anti tank, so I blew up tanks for a living. That was pretty cool. And uh, uh, we were actually air assault. So our specialty was uh, we'd uh, basically ride helicopters at night and <laughs> we'd fly below the tree lines and the helicopter would hover next to some trees and we'd all rappel down and uh, the helicopter would take off without landing. That was kind of our specialty. And being 101st Airborne, you would think that we would jump out of planes in those big round clunky parachutes that you hit the ground like a rock. <laughs> well, I was getting towards the end of my four years in service and I realized hey I'm not going to jump so I joined this sportsman's parachute club and uh, <laughs> so in the sportsman's parachute club basically you'd pack your own parachute they take you up in a helicopter and you jump out of the helicopter and let me tell you when I when I first on my very first jump uh, I was standing at the door and we were so far up, nothing looks real. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost easy to jump. It's, it's almost like jumping into a cold swimming pool. <laughs> About that much intimidation. And then, uh, so I got up to the door, and I jumped. And I'd say for the first ten seconds, I felt that terror. <laughs> Just free falling straight down. And uh, it, was, it was incredible. And then when my chute opened... Uh, it was like everything changed, and it was completely silent, and and I couldn't even tell I was falling. It was just like I was suspended in the middle of a cloud, and everything was really peaceful and quiet. And it went from extreme terror to extreme euphoria. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't jumped, I would highly recommend it. <laughs> it's definitely a memorable experience. <laughs> Okay, so for my second moment of terror, <laughs> I guess you would say, it was a completely different trigger and a completely different response as far as my body and uh, what I was feeling and what I went through. And for this one, it felt like like someone injected my knees with a, the weak knee drug <laughs> and both knees just felt really weak. And uh, I actually, uh, at one point in my life, decided to be a beekeeper and got some honeybees and uh, set up some hives. And I got the suit, this really high-end suit, and it completely protected me from the bees. And, and uh, the first season, 
when I went and first opened that first hive, you know, you, you look at the videos and you go, oh yeah, I'm ready for this. You put the suit on and you get in front of that hive. And when I took that cover off that hive and you look down and there's like a million bees, just, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like this hum. And, and it's, to me, it was ex extremely frightening the first time because it's, you know, you're just naturally fearful of a lot of bees, I think, <laughs> even though I was totally protected, and uh, I could feel it in my knees. It was just only really in my knees, and that was really my second uh, <laughs> frightful experience. I eventually overcame it, and uh, I was a successful beekeeper, but just the first one, and as a matter of fact, with my jump, too, when I, when I jumped out of the helicopter, the first time was very fearful. And then as I did it more and more times, it got easier and easier. Okay, believe it or not, I had a third moment of terror in my life. <laughs> and this happened just a few years ago, I would say. And I was driving home, and I was coming up the mountains. You guys know I live up in the mountains. And the wind was blowing like 80 miles an hour. I could barely keep my vehicle on the road. It was, it was unbelievable. And there was actually a fire that had started. And a fire in high winds blowing through the mountains is unlike anything you've ever seen. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is unbelievable. So, so the fire actually is twice as high as the tallest trees. It goes through the forest faster than you can run, and it burns so hot that it just melts cars completely to the ground. <laughs> and, and I was driving down the highway coming home. It was about an hour drive coming home. And I'm driving and I'm driving. I could see it was nighttime, and I could see the the, the fire lit up the sky. It was, it was so bright. It was almost like sunset the whole time I was driving home, and it was amazing. After about 30 minutes of driving, I realized this is a really big fire moving really fast. And uh, the, the I think the moment it hit me is I looked over to the fire station as I passed the fire station, and all the trucks and the firemen were just standing around <laughs> I mean, at that point you're like even the even the firemen knew that uh this was such a massive beast of a fire that there's absolutely nothing you can do and i was thinking you know is my house okay and you know if the wind shifts uh, it's, it's like i'm an ant next to the campfire it was i mean that it, it almost in, in that instance it, it almost felt like a real pressure on my chest and i couldn't breathe which is the first time I ever felt that, but <laughs> you, you get you know close to something big and frightening like a, a fire moving faster than you can run, burning so hot. Shh, let me tell you, <laughs> that's the first time that I've ever felt real fear from a fire. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you about my fear of snakes. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually had a snake that I was afraid of. And uh, it was basically when I was just starting out, and I had some glass aquariums, and, and I started getting some of these, uh, these, uh, these ARS tubs up here. And I didn't have any of these tubs down on the bottom yet. Just had, uh, like, I think I just had the top ones, and then this sitting right on the floor. And then I had some wire racks over here with uh, some glass aquariums. And I was just getting into snakes, and uh, I picked up this Australian Woma python from a guy on Craigslist. And it was an adult, a male, and the guy didn't really know about shipping snakes. And when he shipped it, he basically put it in a bag and threw it in the box and basically had no packing at all around that snake. And that snake was delivered to my house. And it was bounced around the back of a, of a, of a delivery truck uh, for who knows how long. And when I got that snake out, it was extremely, extremely upset, extremely mean. And uh, uh, I actually put it in a, in a glass aquarium. It was like a 29-gallon glass aquarium. And it didn't eat for months. And, and one, one day I went up, and it hadn't eaten for like a month. And it was in a glass aquarium with uh, one of those caves over it. And I picked the cave off, uh, off from the, the snake. I thought, oh yeah, I'll feed it. So I'll take the cave off. <laughs> and it startled that thing. And 
And let me tell you, I could move around the room, and it was just like coiling up, following me across the room, and it kept hitting the glass so hard, trying to bite me from across the room. <laughs> I thought it was going to break the glass. Then I just finally had to, to exit the room. And it got to the point where I couldn't even be in the room with that snake, and it was just smashing his head against the glass. And uh, I actually nicknamed him Satan because <laughs> he, was, he was really frightening. And then, actually, I got him, uh, I got these tubs down here, and these are really, really nice tubs. These ARS 8018 tubs, and they'll hold a really, look at this big old snake. <laughs> and they'll hold a really big snake, and I put them in this tub, got him out of that glass aquarium, and he transformed into the chillest pet, and I actually renamed them from... Satan to sunshine, <laughs> and he's a great snake, but he didn't eat for eight months, and you could see all along his body hit all these bruises that turned dark, and, and he was really beat up from being improperly shipped, and uh, he started eating pretty good at the end, and uh, I actually sold him, and when I sold him, he was perfectly tame, tame as a pet, and he was completely healed up, he was beautiful, he shed out, and he was he was a really gorgeous snake, but <laughs> that was, uh, you know, I started getting snakes and, and put them in tubs and I, I, put, I brought that snake into my room and, I'm, and that's kind of when it hit me. It's like, what am I doing with all these snakes in my basement? <laughs> am I crazy? And it, it's, I mean, one fearful experience like that with a snake, I think, can really change your attitude uh, about snakes in general. Okay, so I've actually had quite a few people over visiting family and friends that are really afraid of snakes. And usually what happens is, is they'll come in a group and there'll be like four or five people kind of crammed in this room. And there'll be one kind of in the back that is really fearful. And as a matter of fact, uh, I, I came in here once and, and all I did was come over here. Oh, I want to show you the snake. And I opened a tub. And they literally ran out of the room, <laughs> cracked the door up and peeked in, and they, they didn't even see the snake. So, uh, so it, the hard thing is 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 trying to uh, go slow and get people over their fear. And the first thing you have to realize is none of these snakes are venomous in this room. So if you get bit, it's not really a big deal. <laughs> and, the, and the biggest fear I find is getting bit. And I've seen a lot of videos where, where, you know, people on the internet, they'll put their hand by this thing, get bit over and over and over again. And I don't think that's really the best way to do it, but, you know, it kind of desensitizes you to, to getting bit. And I think if you watch a lot of my videos, you know, over time, you kind of get desensitized because I get bit quite a bit. <laughs> and it only feels like someone's just taking a needle and just kind of popping you with it a little needle usually. Uh, unless they grab you and really hang on. But it's, you know, getting bit is really not a big deal, especially from these small snakes. Uh, it could be pretty serious if you had like a big retic, but, um, but for most snakes, I would say the biggest fear is getting bit, and, you know, it's, it's really not as big of an issue as most people <laughs> uh, make it out to be. And let me tell you, even these little hatchlings, I put them on the table, I'm cleaning their tubs, and and they snap at me sometimes and and still even experienced snake keepers I've, I've seen people doing it all their lives and when they get around a snake that's aggressive and snapping at them and it still puts a little <laughs> a little bit of fear just kind of through your body and you're like whoa <laughs> but you know you have to realize that um uh there's different moods of snakes and you really don't want to agitate a snake that's on the defense uh, most snakes you can read them really well and um, usually if they're on the defense I just put them back in the tub and leave them alone and I would say there's hardly any snakes in this room that really go on the defense except these little hatchlings so when most people come in uh, especially if I know they're afraid of snakes this is kind of the, the snake that I start with up here and uh, 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 let me see if I can get this down <laughs> for you with just one hand. And this is, oh, I spilled the water a little bit. This is my little Arizona Mountain King Snake. And he is pretty, I'd say, 
not very scary to most people. <laughs> and he actually got got hurt. Uh, he he crawled through one of my um, one of my moss balls and, and kind of got a little bit of uh, injury right here. So I think he's still a little sore. I don't want to pick him up because he might bite me. <laughs> not that I'm afraid of getting bit. I just don't want to hurt him. So, but that's usually. You know, if this, if this guy was in good shape, uh, that's kind of where I would start with something like that. And then usually from there, what I do is I move to the banana here. And uh, let me get two hands for this. <laughs> so my banana phase, California king snake, she is always kind of in feeding mode. So you got to kind of watch your hands as you open the tub. But once you get her up, she is a sweetheart. She's a very, very friendly snake. Probably one of the, the most friendly, curious, interesting snakes, I would say, that I have. And uh, this is a really good introduction to uh, introducing people to snakes. So, so if you're, you're looking through your snakes and people are fearful of snakes, you always want a snake that you know is not going to bite. Something that's really mellow, really tame, something, something good to start with. And this is the perfect snake for, especially for beginners, people that are not used to snakes or that are a little bit fearful of snakes. So believe it or not, I think my biggest, what I would think would be the scariest snake is often uh, my biggest ambassador, I would say, to people who are afraid of snakes. So take a look at this. This is Lucy in here. And she's been a little ill. She's uh, been rubbing her nose and kind of got a little infection on her nose. And I've been uh, giving her some F10 vapor to kind of cure it. So she's not really in the best mood <laughs> right now. But the funny thing is, she's, she weighs about 50 pounds. And I don't know how long she is. She, I've never really measured her. And you know, watch, uh, you can kind of tell the mood of a snake if I kind of touch her a little bit. She'll probably buck me. See how she bucks? That means leave me alone. I don't want to be touched. <laughs> that is snake language for go away. <laughs> and in that case, you always want to listen to the snake. You never want to pick them up. And she's not been feeling very well lately. She's, she's on the recovery, though. But the good thing about a really, really big snake is is I can actually pick up that snake and I can be way across the room, way over here with the head. <laughs> and then someone could be over here with the middle, someone here with the middle, someone here at the tail. And then the person who's really afraid is standing way over here by the tail and then and the head is all the way by the door. <laughs> so in that case, they're not really afraid because most people are afraid of getting bit, so they're really far away from the head. And at that point, I've seen a lot of people terrified of snakes will actually reach out and touch the tail of Lucy and, and go, Oh, that feels completely unlike what I thought it was going to feel like. That's almost always the first thing that they say, which is really cool. And and then they start uh, understanding it's, it's not really anything to be afraid of. And... Uh, 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 I don't know <laughs> it, yeah, how they uh, kind of relate to their fear. You know, I, I, I kind of help them to that point. And, and then, you know, it's pretty much up to them uh, how much fear they have. But I can see instantly, usually, that as soon as they touch the tail of the snake, that the fear instantly subsides a little bit. <laughs> I'm not really sure what they're feeling inside, but I can tell that it really helps. So that's kind of that's kind of my hint. Uh, if, if you have um, some people that are afraid of snakes and, and you're showing some snakes, uh, I would kind of recommend start small, kind of go to a real friendly snake, and a lot of people they won't touch the small one or the friendly one, but most of the people that I've seen really afraid of snakes will touch the tail <laughs> of a really big snake with the head across the room. <laughs> so hopefully I gave you some hints and I kind of shared some some of my thoughts and uh, some of my fears. <laughs> so thanks for watching and I will see you next time.